All right, figure I'd show you guys something real quick. So I'm gonna log in. This is my solar panel system. So if you look at the bottom, the power is coming from the batteries at the moment. So 4,280 watts or 4.28 kilowatts. Uh, top left, zero coming from the grid. If I click the green button in the middle, you can see my furnace in the middle down there is using 873 watts. That's temporary. So that just came on. It will probably come off in here in a second. Now, if we go back up to the top, kitchen's only using 98 watts. What well, was? That was probably the refrigerator. I'm going to turn on the microwave for 15 seconds. And we'll see that kind of jump up to 1500 watts or so. So now the house is using 5.72 kW, right? So that's quite a bit of usage. And all of this is happening directly from the batteries. So nothing is coming from the grid right now. All that 5.6 kW was directly from the batteries and the solar panel systems. So every circuit that you see here is actually running on solar panels and batteries. And if the power were to go out, I would still have all of these devices. So my entire kitchen, is running on the batteries at 90 watts at the moment. 1400 watts for the master bedroom, so that's the TV, the chargers, and I have a 14,500 BTU air conditioning in there. A little small portable unit over there in the corner, but it keeps the whole bedroom cool. It would keep me cool at night if there was a power outage, and it cools off down into the living room and downstairs as well. And we just keep that running in the daytime because solar panels provide all the power. So I never have to pay for any of that energy being used and um, it's actually helpful for me to have it because i overproduce typically with my solar panel so i like that cool air being blown in the house um, microwaves on there like you just saw kids rooms that are 100 watts right now they're not watching tv or anything it looks like uh, furnaces kicked on for some reason so 868 watts that kind of comes and goes garage kitchen dining and four-year lights that's using 50 watts it's the kitchen lights on at the moment game room it has this own 14,500 BTU AC as well that always is running. So up, well, it's always in the summer, right? So it's upstairs keeping the upstairs cool because that's where the kids are. It kind of is it's positioned right near their bedroom. So they got cool air blowing into their bedrooms and then in the game room, they'll have that cool air as well. So they're running at 1200 watts. Living room, laundry, guest port. So this would be like my TV, Wi-Fi, uh, all the different lights, uh, some lights we have for plants in here, stuff like that. The laundry room, all that in there is, is connected and would be there without power if we needed it. That's at 151 watts at the moment. Garage plug, so I have a refrigerator out there, so that's 272 watts that is running right now. And you can see that it runs more often than the kitchen one because it's outside fighting that heat. So I have insulated my garage quite a bit, so it does do a little bit better now. It used to run at like 350 watts, and it is doing a lot better now that we've insulated it. Sheds at 25 watts. That's just a fan that I have out there. So that's just a cool way of seeing what's going on. Um, usually I'm going to have uh, 4,500 to 6,500 watts of power coming in from the solar panels during the daytime. So you can see I'm using somewhere between 1.7 and 4,000 watts during the day, depending on if we're all home and what's being turned on, uh, using closer to 3, 1,500 ish, like you're seeing right now, whenever um, it's summer because of the ACs that are on. So if I have 4,000 to 6,000 watts of power coming in from the solar panels, that means it's able to run the house with all the stuff on and still charge the batteries at the same time. So all day, I usually have my batteries topped off. I do have two of my solar panel arrays turned off at the moment. So that's why you see on the right hand side, that battery is not as full as the left hand. The left hand has its uh, solar panels plugged in. It is a little cloudy as well. Um, the right hand side, it only has one array that's turned on, so it's not able to keep up with the demand as much as the left power hub. So I'll log in real quick and just show you that. So these two batteries are topped off. These are 10,000 watts of power sitting there in reserve. And uh, we have three arrays. One of the arrays are turned off, as you can see, as zero volts at the moment in solar array three. The other ones are producing 500, 400 watts each. Uh, there's cloud coverage right now. These will typically, all three of those produce 1600 watts. Each one of those will produce 1600 watts. So you get like 45 out of there typically. Second power hub, you'll see. Uh, it's got 47%. 
and that's because of the three arrays, it only has one, and it's only doing 214. So these also typically will produce 1,600 watts, all three of them independently, so that's another 4,500. So I, potentially I can get up there like to 9,000 watts being produced continuously. Uh, the truth is that you have panels facing different directions. So what I usually have is very strong production for one or two of the panels during the day and then stronger production at night, which is how I like it set up. And so um, with 9,000 watts, I mean, my house very rarely would be using that. It'd be overkill. I would have bought too many panels. With this type of design, um, what I'm trying to do is not sell back extra energy. I want to produce exactly what I'm uh, looking to produce. And then um, any extra energy I want to store in the battery and anything beyond that, um, I would just come in the house and just use it for something. I have charging stations for our rechargeable batteries. So if there's extra energy and the batteries are topped off, there's nowhere to put it, I will go turn on uh, you know, some ACs, some TVs. I might do some laundry at that time. I'm going to go um, like I said, I have charging stations, which will charge all of our chargeable devices and a little section that we have. So I'd rather use that extra energy than try to sell it back. And then I'd rather store the energy as much as possible, invest more in that direction so that when there's power outages, I can self-sustain myself and my family with the cycle of solar and batteries that I have. And then my last fail safe is I do have a smart generator that's a dual fuel generator that runs off propane and gas. And so if it were to run out of power or my batteries were to get down to 30%, that generator kicks on and it will use 40 pound tanks that we have in reserve. And for every pound, I get a kilowatt hour. So for 40 pounds, I get 40 kilowatt hours. And that cost me $32 to fill up that 40 pound tank. So that's eight cents a kilowatt hour or half of what I would spend at the grid. So I basically never use my, so uh, I never use the utility grid during the daytime. I use solar panels and battery. Um, when the sun goes down, I use batteries from four to eight. At eight o'clock, I charge the batteries on the grid and have free energy all night long. If there was no power or whatever, scenario you could come up with where system wasn't good enough, strong enough, last long enough, whatever. I only use my propane at half the cost of the grid at eight cents. So however you slice it, I'm in a good position uh, for life. And these have 30 year warranties on them, guaranteed production. The batteries, I will get 16 and a half years out of them, 6,000 cycles, if I go all the way down to zero every single day, which as you see, I don't go to zero every day. I don't cycle these all the way down by design. So I get even more lifespan out of them. And worst case scenario, if I ever needed to get a new battery, you only pay half the price for the recharge to get a new battery um, replacement. So if you have any questions, call me at 713-882-7467. Shoot me an IM or an email at cblack at starlight.solar or at, you can send it to colby at emerger.com, either one of those, I can help you out.